this set of problems, these six problems right here, are gonna formalize the things that you just dealt with on the front. Well, this formalized your thinking, and now we're gonna take this and apply it, I should say. So, if you would like, you can write some intermediate steps that are, quite honestly, a waste of time. I'm gonna do that on the very first problem, and then probably never again until I, unless it becomes necessary in another problem. But for number one, I could say, well, I'm really dealing with the limit as x approaches c of the f function minus the limit as x approaches c for the g function. And really, I've never seen a student that looked at that and was like, well, how did we get this? We're just, we're subtracting the limits, okay? But in the directions, they told us that the limit as x approaches, whatever c is for f is eight, and the limit as x approaches c for g is nine. So I really just have eight minus nine, which gives me negative one, and no one is surprised at that. Okay, so instead of writing this every time and really going through this intermediate step for each of these, I'm not gonna do it. The exception will be this one. We will encounter that one later. So let's just jump in. Multiplying two things, I, I have the limit as x approaches c for f, that's eight. The limit as x approaches c for g, that's nine. It is not 89, it's eight times nine, so 72. Okay, the limit as x approaches c of negative four g of x. Okay, fantastic. What's that negative four doing there? It is, it's a scalar, it's just a multiple. You can put it in the very front and write a middle step. I choose not to. If the negative four wasn't there, the answer would be nine. But it is there, so we multiply by negative 4, and we get negative 36. Okay, this one is raised to a power. So therefore, I'm going to just take what I would have without the power, which would be 8, and raise it to that power, and I get 64. Now, let's not make it harder than it is. We're dividing these, so I'm really going to have, well, let's do, just do this on the same line. I like to put equal marks here, just to show we're dealing with the same thing. You don't have to do that. But I have uh, 8 over 9. There it is. Okay, now we get to one that's just a little more complicated. It applies a lot of different aspects of this all at the same time. So I'm not going to write all the intermediate steps. I don't find it necessary, but if I did, I would be putting a 4 in the front, factoring a 4 out. I have 4 times the limit as x approaches c of f of x divided by the limit as x approaches c of g of x minus the limit uh, as x approaches c of g of x, and then I'd square that whole thing. Okay, so instead of going through all that and writing all that, this takes all these different aspects and puts them into one problem. So I have four of what I get when I approach C for the F function, divided by what I get when I approach C for the G function, minus what I get when I approach C for the G function, but I square it. And I have already worked this one out. I'll save you the trouble. Let, let's not worry about all the ridiculous mathematics that have to happen here. We have 32 over 9 minus 81, and at one point I had typed this in a calculator, and I got negative 697 divided by 9. Just a little heads up. It is totally okay on a free response question if you leave your answer like this, unless you need that answer later. We'll have those discussions after a while, though, as we talk about how specific to get with your answers.